What if I told you you're making a fundamental mistake every time you film something? And this mistake is what's causing you and 90% of other videographers' shots to not look as professional or as impactful as they could. Now, every single filmmaker regards two questions, which I'm gonna to reveal to you in this video, as the most important factors before filming every single shot, while most of us seem to neglect this entirely. These two questions make up this very simple equation that will help you break away from the pack and take your footage from looking nice to really pull in the viewer's attention and creating an emotional reaction that they'll never forget. Now you're probably wondering what am I doing wrong? Don't feel too bad though because we're not all perfect and I did this wrong for a long time as well. And to demonstrate what this entire video is about I'm going to take you back to an embarrassing memory of mine when I was on a Hollywood set in the 70s with the one and only Steven Spielberg. Everybody! Everybody out of check! Actors standing by! Action! Yes, Mr. Spielsborg. Will you take a look at that extremely professional looking Hollywood camera equipment bag and tell me what lens you think we should use for this next shot? Um, This one? You can't just pick any old lens, you dingo! Why the heck did I just go all Australian? Well, it was at this point that I realised that it's a bad idea to just pick any lens and that focal lengths must play a much bigger part in a shot than I thought. And to avoid being slapped again, I decided to be a little bit more selective. Okay, what about uh, what about this one, Mr. Spielbloom? And why? Um, because it looks mint and it gives you a nice blurry background. Wrong again. Again. Sorry, son. I have a terrible habit. And that is when I learned there's more to a great shot than how nice it looks. You can have a well composed image, but if you miss out on the second thing, the shot will fall flat. And this is where our equation comes in. But I'm going to park this here for now and come back to 70s me and Steven later on. Because I want to give you some basic guidelines and point out the characteristics of typical focal lengths before we get onto that. Wide lenses are typically used for establishing shots and setting the scene because you can get a lot more of the surroundings in the frame. Standard or normal lens usually use for medium torso shots and conversations between two people because it's a more natural perspective, much like the human eye. Then we've got tight or long lenses. Now these are more zoomed in and show less of the surroundings, normally used to show details and emotion because it isolates the subject from the background. Notice that I'm saying the word usually and typically. These aren't rules. None of this stuff in this video are rules. You can use them in any way you want, but there's a few considerations and that's what this entire video is about. And it'll become more apparent later on. It goes deeper than this, much deeper. Different focal lengths have distinctive qualities beyond just what fits in the frame. And using lenses in a certain way can have a psychological impact on the way the shot is perceived. For example, look at this shot of Morgan using a tight lens. Because not much of the background is shown, he is quite dominant in the frame and the audience's focus is on him. But look at the same shot on a wide lens. Even though he's taking up the same space in the frame, more of the surroundings are shown, which gives the the illusion that the environment is larger, making our character look small or insignificant. A long focal length compresses the image and flattens out the perspective, which means it's bringing the background and the foreground closer together and changing the perceived depth. Look how close these people next to the Clark shop seem to Morgan compared to how far away the same shop looks using the wide angle lens. It seems a lot further away using the wide angle. And it's the same with this statue. The wide angle lens creates separation between Morgan and the statue but using the 85mm it brings them closer together whereas the 50mm looks way more natural. Using a tight lens a little further away creates the illusion that we're looking in at our characters from afar whilst isolating them because of that out of focus background. It doesn't feel like we're there with them but if you want to bring the viewer into the action and make them feel like they're there get close and use a wide angle. Wide angles can create tension when used up close because the edges warp, making faces look distorted and unnatural. On the other hand, a standard or normal lens will reduce any tension because it's more subtle and natural looking. This is why 50mm lenses are generally used for conversations between two people. But if it's a tense scene, you could go tight in on the faces to show the emotions or super wide really close up to create tension. So to make sense of all this and to apply it, I'll take you back to when Mr. Spielberg revealed the two secret questions that will help you be more intentional with your lens selection. Lens boy! What do you think are the two most important questions to ask on a film set? Um, do you ever speak without that megaphone and what time's lunch? 
Right, let's start with this. Tell me what's happening in this scene. Um, so our character Morgan, he's looking around the city. He finds something he wants to take a picture of, so he gets his camera out and takes a photo. Right! So, what is it we need to show here? Well, I guess we need to show Morgan who he is, where he is, show his expression, and then show him getting the camera out of his bag and make that clear, and then the action of him taking a picture. Correct! We need to give the viewer context. If we start this sequence off with a tight lens, the audience won't know where we are. There's no context to connect him to the environment. So let's go wide for this first shot, but... Sometimes you might want to go tight to create suspense and give the feeling of claustrophobia. But if it's all wide, you won't know what he's doing. So there really are no rules. It all comes down to what you want the audience to feel. Therefore, the next most important question is... How do I want the viewer to feel about this shot, or the character, or this place? Good boy. And that's the key to a great shot. You can have the best looking lens ever, but if it doesn't give the viewer context or make them feel something, then the shot hasn't done its job. And I think the reason why people neglect this is because A, we default to our favourite lens, and B, we were there at the time of filming, so we had the context. And it's easy to forget that the viewer wasn't there and they didn't have any context, so we need to remember to give it to them. Whatever it is you're filming next, make sure you ask yourself these two questions and I guarantee your videos will come across a lot better to the viewer. Now I've got plenty more helpful videos like this one on the way soon, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so that you don't miss anything. In the meantime though, if you wanted to know how I colour graded these clips, check out this video here and I'll see you in the next one. Action!